<laughs> okay, why is this picture up there? So, from over a year ago, uh, when we were thinking of this, of course we're going to invite the people we invited, but one individual that was on my heart to invite, I had already discussed it with him, uh, was Dr. Harry Reeder, who so was on the far left there. So you all know, one year ago, Dr. Reeder went to be with the Lord. I mean, this picture is literally from May, the beginning of May of last year. Many of us saw him in Charlotte. And um, so it's, it's possible that this picture is one of the last conference pictures he'd ever, uh, he had taken. So when I saw my good friend Ike Reeder a couple weeks ago, and I said, uh, hey, you gonna be in Charlotte? And uh, because he's always in Charlotte. And uh, he said, no, I'm not going to be in Charlotte anytime soon. I'm like, oh, okay. He said, why? I said, because we're celebrating our 75th anniversary. And um, if you were in town, I'd love to have had you with us. And he said, well, I'm, I'm coming. And I said, no, don't make a special trip. He goes, what, you don't want me? <laughs> so, Ike, thank you for coming. Would you come up and say a few words for us? Thanks. Ike Reeder is, is obviously uh, Harry's son a good friend, a humble man. He's the president of Birmingham Theological Seminary and the founder of the Reader Center, which is a new thing. Uh, Ike didn't want to be in this picture because he said, Let, you guys should be in it. Like, he didn't feel like he was worthy to, and I'm like, who, do I, who am I? So it's obviously Dr. Robertson and Dr. Reader, and then two regular guys that are just friends. But Ike, would you say a few words yeah, for us? Thanks, brother. Yeah. Appreciate you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. What George didn't tell you is I really said, George, neither one of us should be in that picture. Uh, let's get Harry Reeder and O. Palmer Robertson, and, and that, that'll get a bunch of likes on Facebook. But you know, you and I in it, that's just, <clears throat> glad they took that down thumb thing off there. No, it's, uh, uh, it's a privilege to be with you all tonight. I've, I've really enjoyed the last Five years or so, George and I getting to know each other, and uh, George, is, as you all know, is a student at BTS, finishing out his doctoral degree right now. Uh, you can pray for him. He's coming up on his dissertation as he just finished his la the end of his coursework. So uh, I, whenever I get a phone call from George, I know it's a, uh, hey, do we really have to, you know, kind of <laughs> <clears throat> one of those. But no, he's been a great student and a great friend and a great advocate for the seminary, as I know several of you have sat in on some classes, and there's a couple of you doing the Presbyterian Leadership Certificate, so that alone warrants a visit to, to thank you for your uh, patronage of the seminary. So we're grateful to serve you in that capacity. But of course, the real reason why I'm here is uh, not just out of friendship to George, uh, also friendship to Gary, uh, who uh, has known me since I was, as, as well, has known me since before I was born uh, in that context. Gary, for those of you that don't know, Gary and my dad, uh, served together in the 1970s in Chattanooga. Uh, Gary and Dad charted much of the same path with one another and were uh, friends and partners in ministry in a number of capacities and locations. Um, of course, uh, as, as Kitty, I believe, was sharing uh, earlier this afternoon and talking about uh, the, as the church, as the, the joining and receiving between the PCA and the RPCES occurred in 1982, 283, whatever it was, um, and they were having conversations. They had a pastor come up and talk to him about what's next and sort of thing, and well, that pastor was my father who came up and talked about uh, what comes next, and here's how things go, because he had been given a, a charge by Briarwood Presbyterian Church to uh, move to Charlotte, North Carolina, plant Christ Covenant Church, and help launch multiple presbyteries, because at that point in time, there was just one presbytery in the big giant center of North Carolina called Central Carolina Presbytery. And so uh, when dad got the chance to get to know the folks at Meadowview and come up and have a conversation and be encouraging and help to uh, uh, see what comes next. And one of the things he said could come next could be Gary Cox could come next. Uh, and so he said, my good friend Gary would be a wonderful candidate for you uh, to come next and see how the Lord might bless his ministry here among you. And I think we all know that we're sitting in some of the fruits of that blessing that came. But I got to then receive some of the fruits of that blessing as well. Because uh, during that time, I was a, a young pup in Charlotte going to high school and 
uh, uh, in youth group with the Currens girls and, uh, and, and other folks, that, that many of whom have ended up here, and so it was a wonderful time. But after graduating from college, I was called to go to Vienna, Austria as a uh, young man uh, to be a teacher at an international Christian school and to go with Mission to the World. So, of course, the first thing you do is you go, hey, Dad, what churches should I send letters to that might support me as a missionary because I'm 22 and I don't know how to raise money. I mean, you know, Christ Covenant's going to give me money, but other than that, I don't know. So he said, well, you should contact Gary and see if Meadowview will support you. And I did, and Gary set up a meeting for me with the missions committee, and so Meadowview Prez was my first church outside of Christ Covenant that came on board as a supporting me as a missionary for three years in uh, Vienna, Austria, where I got to go and teach at an international school and work with students from around the world, which was a wonderful experience. My first year after that, after teaching for a year in Austria, uh, in 1999, the summer of 1999, I came home and dad said, well, you, you know, I was home just for a few weeks, uh, just because, uh, you know, I had to go back just a little furlough time. And dad said, well, you know, son, when, when, and by the way, which those who know my father can know, this, this was the, this was the, well, you know, son, right? Does that look like it, Gary? <laughs> when a church supports you, you should tell them how you're doing. So I said, you're saying I should call Gary and see if I should go up to Meadowview Prez and give a report. And he said, that's exactly what I'm telling you to do. <clears throat> so I called Gary and Gary said, yeah, come on up and we'll give you a Sunday school time to talk to some folks and tell how the mission work is going and answer some questions or do whatever, or else they'll cut you from their budget next year. <laughs> and these are valuable lessons to a seminary president who has to raise a lot of money to run a school. My first fundraising lesson. And so I came up that summer and got to spend a Sunday and it was the first summer that y'all were in this building and I got to stand right down there on the floor in a Sunday school. They had a joint Sunday school session where they pulled together several adult Sunday schools uh, where I got to spend about 20 minutes sharing the work that God was doing through the International Christian School of Vienna. Uh, now, I was an English teacher back then, so I was terrified of, uh, of explicating a Bible verse because I was like, no, I should talk about poetry. That's what I should be talking about. And Dad was like, no, you're don't going as a missionary. You're going to share the Bible with them. And that Sunday, I was sitting outside. Our, you know, had come up, uh, was staying with Ron and Jennifer, you know, at the time. And, uh, and, and I sat there in my bedroom and I said, I've got to share a Bible verse with them. And I said, and I don't have a verse to share. I don't know what to share. So I started flipping through, and I came upon a verse. And it was because the college, I went to Covenant College, and their college was that in all things Christ might be preeminent in Colossians chapter 1. And I was like, well, I can't use that one because everybody will know it's covenants, and it's Christ's covenants, and so I'm, that'll be too lame. So I read on down a little further and found Colossians 1.28. Him we proclaim, admonishing everyone, and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we might be found mature in Christ. And I said, that sounds good. It's got the all wisdom. I can say that's literature. I should teach from all wisdom. Now I know that's not what the verse means now. <laughs> but that Sunday was the first Sunday that I stood up and said, I'm going to talk to you about Colossians 128, which then became my life verse and is now the verse of Birmingham Theological Seminary that we put on the bottom of all the diplomas. With the charge for each one of our graduates, whether they're newly minted into ministry or experienced in ministry as your pastor, with the charge that there's nothing better that one could say of us than that we were found mature in Christ. in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Not hidden from you as a believer, but hidden for you. And I'm grateful that Meadowview Prez has had such a history. You heard it from one of the founder, young children that was sharing on the video, right? We got one of those reformed pastors who started sharing with us 
the whole Bible, and we really started to grow. Because when you study the Bible, you see Christ. Full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord for the legacy. My dad loved this church. I love this church. Gary loved this church. The other pastors that are here, praise the Lord for your ministry. You love this church, and I'm grateful you have a pastor now that loves this church. And we pray for the future. We don't look to the past. We don't live in the past. We can celebrate the Lord's victories in the past as we march on the church triumphant for the kingdom of God. Thank you. Oh, goodness gracious, George. I uh, wanted to give you that picture. Actually, uh, there's another individual in it. But... <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you so much, yeah. brother. I think that's the last conference he did. That it was. Yeah. Yep, two weeks later. Okay. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you, man. Love you, man. Yeah. All right. Okay. We